Hi everybody, welcome. We are out in the field to shoot some beautiful nighttime star time lapse. So in this video, you're gonna learn everything how it basically works. Coming up. Hi guys, my name is Paul. I'm a German-based cinematographer and this channel is all about filmmaking, gear reviews, but also the interview of tutorials. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribe to don't miss anything from the channel here. So yeah, welcome. We are out in the field. And first of all, if you want to record a nighttime star time lapse, then obviously the location is very important. We are here up on a hill or a little mountain. So, and also you have to track where is the best position. So we want to record here the Milk Street, so to say, and therefore we are facing south so that we have basically the best view on everything. And also the camera settings are very important, but first of all, make sure to make a good location scouting because if you are close to a city, you have a lot of glow from the city and your overall exposure would be higher than what we have here everything is pretty dark, there are no cities around and stuff like that. So make sure if you're around in a city, then obviously you will have a harder time because you have so much glow from the city. So therefore it's better to be out in the nowhere, I would, I would say. So first of all, what is really important is power supply. So here I hooked up uh, the camera with a V-mount battery and it's just plugged into the USB-C but you can also use a dummy battery and then just plugging it to a USB-C battery whatever so just make sure that the camera is powered all the time. So then obviously you also need kind of a sturdy tripod so you see the camera must be in a good position and must be stable. There's the so-called 500 rule which means you gonna divide um, your focal length by yeah, 500 by a focal length. So on a 24 mil, which is mostly also, then you get around 20, 20 seconds of um, long time exposure. Here I have a 12 mil on, but I have made very good experience with 20 seconds of long time exposure. So I'm gonna use that. And everything around, I set around that value, okay? So, and also what is really important is that you set your focus manually. I learned it the hard way because uh, last time I didn't check the focus really and every shot was basically a little bit soft. So therefore make sure you are manual focus and you check if you are critical in focus. Really important because otherwise if you are on autofocus it might be that the camera starts hunting in the middle of the time lapse which is something you don't want. So then obviously the other camera settings. We are in a 24 frames time timeline so to say and therefore I will need at least like 400 photos to get like equivalent of 16 seconds something like that. So the more the better so now you can count and if I'm in 20 seconds of long time exposure I will have a two seconds interval and then yeah that will take me like two and a half hours something like that and uh, yeah also make sure when you start your time lapse that you turn off all your lights the phone and stuff like that because in this setting your camera is very sensitive to any kind of light right all right, and then all the other things I just set around then, because here I'm at ISO 6400 and uh, I'm at a T-stop of four, something like that. So these values I just gonna dial in depending on the situation. So as I've said, is if you're in a city, you will have so much glow that your overexposure would be darker. So you can be on an F8, for example, with 20 times 20 seconds of long time exposure. So that depends on where you are. So yeah, and then everything you just keep on recording and then everything is going to happen in the edit. And yeah, I hope everything is all right. And if you have any further questions, just drop them down in the comments below and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers.